According to the view discussed in the previous video, the application of the law of non-international armed conflict should no longer be dependent upon borders. That's why some have said that, under that view, the world has become a global battlefield. That view nonetheless depends on IHL only applying to acts that are connected to a specific existing non-international armed conflict occurring within the territory of a state. However, this may be contrasted with the even more expansive view of the geographical scope of application of the law of non-international armed conflict developed by the US after 9-11 in pursuit of its global war on terror. This global war on terror is claimed to designate one single conflict between the US on one side and Al-Qaeda and its affiliates on the other side. Initially, after 9-11, the US qualified that conflict as an international armed conflict. But after the US Supreme Court rejected that qualification, the US government view it as a non-international armed conflict, which was territory, territorially unlimited in scope. According to that view, all people over the world who are affiliated to Al-Qaeda constitute one unitary party to the conflict against the US, and their violent acts may be aggregate as to reach the, the intensity threshold for the non-international armed conflict to exist. Therefore, HL can apply to any action directed towards Al-Qaeda Al and its affiliates as part to a non-international armed conflict, wherever they are located. This goes even further than the view discussed before, since one consequence of such a global non-international armed conflict is that IHL may apply even to acts which cannot be linked to a specific existing armed conflict opposing the US to Al-Qaeda in one particular state, such as, for example, in Afghanistan or in Pakistan. So, this is the view of a worldwide non-international armed conflict. This view seems very flawed. As rightly, rightly said by one scholar, one simply cannot aggregate all terrorist acts motivated by Islamic fundamentalism, coupled with professed allegiance to Al-Qaeda all across the world, in order to satisfy the twofold intensity and organization tests.